Skeletal muscle contraction. Neuromuscular junction. Neuromuscular junction is the site where a motor nerve fiber and a skeletal muscle fiber meet, also called synapse or synaptic cleft. In order for a skeletal muscle to contract, its fibers must first be stimulated by a motor neuron. Motor unit is one motor neuron and many skeletal muscle fibers. Motor end plate is the specific part of a skeletal muscle fiber sarcolemma directly beneath the neuromuscular junction. Neurotransmitter is a chemical substance released from a motor end fiber causing stimulation of the sarcolemma of a muscle fiber. In this case, it is acetylcholine. Synaptic cleft is a small space between neuron and muscle. Excitation contraction coupling of skeletal muscle. Excitation contraction coupling is the sequence of events by which transmission of an action potential along the sarcolemma leads to sliding of myofilaments. The events at the neuromuscular junction set the stage for excitation contraction coupling by providing excitation. Released acetylcholine binds to receptor proteins on the sarcolemma and triggers an action potential in a muscle fiber. Action potential is propagated along the sarcolemma and down the T-tubules. Transmission of action potential along the T-tubules of the triads causes the voltage-sensitive tubule proteins to change shape. This shape change opens the calcium release channels in the terminal cisternae of the sarcoplasmic reticulum, allowing massive amounts of calcium to flow into the cytosol within one millisecond. Calcium binds to troponin and removes the blocking action of tropomycin. When calcium binds, troponin changes shape, exposing the binding sites for myosin on the thin filaments. Contraction begins. Myosin binding to actin forms cross bridges and contraction begins. At this point, the excitation contraction coupling is over. Sliding filament theory. It is the most popular theory concerning muscle contraction. It was first proposed by Hugh Huxley in 1954. It states that muscle contraction involving sliding movement of the thin filaments past the thick filaments. Sliding continues until the overlapping of the thin and thick filaments is complete. The changes in muscle during contraction are the distance between the Z-lines of the sarcomeres decreases, the I-bands shorten, the A-bands move closer together but do not diminish in length. The role of calcium in contraction mechanism. In a resting muscle cell, that is, in the absence of calcium ions, tropomycin blocks or inhibits myosin binding sites on actin. When calcium ions are present, calcium binds to troponin, causing a conformational change in the troponin complex which causes tropomycin to move, which opens or exposes the myosin binding sites on actin. This results in interaction between the active sites on actin and the heads of myosin. Cross bridge cycling. When calcium ions are present, the myosin binding sites on actin are exposed. Cross bridge attaches. The ATP breakdown provides energy to cock myosin head. The cocked myosin attaches to the exposed actin binding site. Cross bridge springs from the cocked position and pulls on the actin filament. The cross bridges break. An ATP binds to cross bridge but is not yet broken down. The myosin heads are released from actin. As long as calcium ions are present, this continues until the muscle fiber is fully contracted. Relaxation. Acetylcholinesterase is an enzyme present in the neuromuscular junction. It immediately destroys acetylcholine, so the motor end plate is no longer stimulated. 
calcium ions are transported from sarcoplasm back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Linkages between actin and myosin are broken. The muscle fiber relaxes. Energy sources for contraction. The energy used to power the interaction between actin and myosin comes from ATP. ATP stored in skeletal muscle lasts only about 6 seconds. ATP must be regenerated continuously if contraction is to continue. There are three pathways in which ATP is regenerated. Coupled reaction with creatinine phosphate, anaerobic cellular respiration, aerobic cellular respiration. Coupled reaction with creatinine phosphate. Creatinine phosphate plus ADP produces creatinine plus ATP. Muscle stores a lot of creatinine phosphate. This coupling reaction allows for about 10 seconds worth of ATP. Muscle fatigue. Muscle fatigue is a state of physiological inability to contract. If no oxygen is available in muscle cells to complete aerobic respiration, pyruvic acid is converted to lactic acid, which causes muscle fatigue and soreness. Muscle fatigue results from a relative deficit of ATP and accumulation of lactic acid. Oxygen debt. The oxygen debt is the amount of oxygen necessary to support the conversion of lactic acid to glycogen. This conversion is needed to replenish spent glycogen stores. Heat production. Almost half of the energy released during muscle contraction is lost to heat, which helps maintain our body temperature at 37 degrees Celsius. Excessive heat is lost through many negative feedback mechanisms, including sweating, dilation of superficial blood vessels, increased breathing rate, and increased heart rate.